Hey everybody, it's Wes with Baron Heating and uh, BaronGreenTeam.com. And wow, this video is going to be epic. I uh, am so excited to share all this information with you guys. Um, just a classic example of new technology and switching from a gas furnace with the old dial thermostat to something so much more fantastic but new and different. And so um, I just finished a walkthrough with these guys. Uh, to help them understand the system and kind of bred this video where I'm like, let's talk about ductless. Let's talk about now you have it, what do you do with it? So a couple of really important things. I'm just going to do the exact same thing I did with them. Now this is the Daikin Amura um, 18,000 BTU head. And so while we're in here, I'll show you kind of some side profile and stuff and I'll take you through the how-to. So that's what that looks like. And this is probably on high fan. I have an auto mode, but we turned up the stats, so that's a noise volume we're going to get. Um, all right, so let's start with the thermostat. Okay, so some really important stuff. Let's see if I can get some good light here. Without, okay, here we go. All right, so most of the stats look like this, okay? So you always want to make sure everything's on, of course. And remember that they all have to be in the same mode in order to operate. So they're all in fan mode, all in heat mode, all in AC mode. That's a really important thing is that you don't want to turn these off and on all the time. You want to keep them at temperature and we'll get to that. But with modes for ductless, we don't use the auto mode very often. The auto mode is here. So if you go through this and you cycle through, you'll see a sun and a snowflake, which is cooling, and auto mode. Um, you'll see a dry mode, which is a function of cooling to remove moisture. And then you have fan mode, which is, you know, like for these guys... They got this wood stove here, and so if they put this in fan mode, they can shoot that heat from the wood stove all the way down there where we're sending all the air already, okay? So, let's go back to this. All right, so in auto mode, ductless are weird. They'll be in heat, and then they won't switch to cool until it goes eight degrees over the temperature uh, that it's set for, and so <laughs> it doesn't, work really well uh, for people who are like, why isn't the cooling coming on? So you do want to set them automatically, uh, or not automatically, set them manually from heat to cool. The next thing is fan speed. So with the fan speed, and that is this button here, you're going to cycle through, that was night mode, low, medium, medium, medium high, high, and auto. And the reason why you want to leave that in auto is that auto allows the compressor to talk to the indoor unit and say, okay, I need to send a lot of heat to this uh, head, turn up your fan. Now, if you set the fan to low in a space continually, you are limiting the compressor output for that head. So you always want to leave it in auto and then manually turn it to low. Like, so for these guys in this space, if they're going to be chilling in this couch, then... They're going to want to maybe turn that to low, but they want to turn it to auto after they leave or after the guests are gone. Okay. Now, the powerful button is important, but you don't want to use that as a recovery tool uh, like these guys were trying to do. You want to use it as like you come home from vacation, you know, something like that. You're, you turn them all to powerful mode. That will turn the fans on high and the outdoor compressor to high as well. Okay, none of this other stuff really matters. Brightness, I mean, you figure that out. Econo mode. So this isn't really about these. This isn't really about these functions. But I'll will tell you the uh, the louvers here in a sec. So the other really important part of this for the ductless is that what you want to do is in each space. So here's this space. Okay. We're sending the heat and cooling, I guess, down here. I can actually feel, just so from you at home, I can actually feel the airflow right here in the kitchen uh, from the unit. That's perfect. But what you want to do is you want to set, when your base, get your baseline. So in each zone, you set the temperature. Like in here, we set it to 70. Okay. Let me turn, I don't know if I can get any more lights on in here. There we go. So we set it to 70. And what the customer is going to do is they're going to wait and say, okay, is that too warm once the unit settles in? Am I too warm? Am I too cold? If you're too warm, what you want to do is turn it down a degree or two and then wait. Am I too warm? Am I too cold? This is not a thermostat. 
This is a comfort control. And so ductless is rarely ever going to be the same temperature on here as it is actually in the room. And I know that's weird, but this is why I'm doing this video. So what you want to do is figure out in this zone, because all the zones will be different, what temperature do I want, am I comfortable at when it says it on here? So if this says 67, but the indoor, you know, the temp in the room is 70, then what you want to do and then you're comfortable is you get a Sharpie and you write on the back of this heat or H dot dot 67. Now you know when you switch back to heat in the fall that you're going to set this room to 67 on the remote, which will get you the temperature you want in the space. Okay. And you're going to repeat that in all the zones. All right. The other really important factor to these working really well, when it, especially when we're using a, a concept called displacement. Displacement, if you go to my barrengreenteam.com uh, website, I have an article on ductless called Displacement versus Replacement. Replacement ductless is heads everywhere. Every room, every each side, you know, there's one here, there's one in here, etc. Replacement is we're trying to limit the cost of the initial system while increasing the effectiveness of the design. And so in this case, we are displacing in this space. We put that head there because, because of that, right? Now the deal is, is that those louvers have to be set appropriately. When I came here, this head was not working. It was, the space was cold. They were not happy with the system. And part of that was that those louvers were set, you know, this way. They were, they were, um, they were pointing at this and then the, the thing wasn't all the way up. And so that is going to trap the heat in that space, in that room. And like, so somebody might have it where it's going side to side. Again, this space that I'm in is only going to get heat when it slowly passes by there. So we want to have the louver set straight out and as high as possible uh, to bring that and curl that air back around. Okay. And that function of that is here. So when you go to your remote, you have these two swings, side to side and up and down. And when you click the up and down, let's see, I gotta make it beep. Beep. So when you click the up and down, the louver will start swinging up and down. And so right now it's going down. Okay. And then we're gonna do it here. So we're gonna wait. And then once it comes back up, come on baby. It's like watching paint dry. In YouTube time, this is like five hours. Okay, we're almost there. A little bit more. Uh, there we go. Okay, so then you click it, it stops. No, it's the same for the inside. Whenever you press it again is where it stops. So if you swing it back and forth and you don't pay attention, you might stop it and it might be shooting off to the side. Okay. So super important for displacement. Now I'm going to show you the upstairs because there's some important design elements that we did up here. Again, reducing cost while increasing effectiveness. So I'll take you to the bedroom first here. And so immediately I walk into this hallway and I'm hit with a blast of warm air. And the reason for that is that check out this little like wind tunnel directive thing we got going on in here. Okay. So that down there was an Amira. This is an LV series indoor head. But again, I've got the louvers pointed directly straight and they are up all the way. And from the head's position, what's up? Um, that's what I look like for all of you who have never seen me. Hello. Uh, we're going straight down the hallway and we're taking that little bend. It's just like the air gets packed in right there and boom, it's fantastic. So that gives us a, that familiar two for one concept for design. The other thing is that they like to keep this bedroom really cold at night and that's okay. The important fact is, is that, and I, I'm going to get to this when I go back downstairs, is that you want to leave your zones on unless you have to have them off for like, we want to sleep super cold or maybe just turn it down. 
but these units don't have the BTUs like your old furnace to bring the house up from you know super cold at night. And you don't need it to. The reason why you turned off the furnace at night before, here's the other one, look at that. So see how I'm tag teaming this hallway? Same thing, louver straight up. Same thing, let's check out the thermal on this. Boom, right? Right through the door and then the space gets <coughs> plenty of heat already. So here's the trick, is that, we'll go back downstairs, that when you are, I'm about to cough my brains out, hold on. <coughs> so, when you are transitioning from this to this, you have to understand that you are now microzoning. So what you have is a system that you can heat the downstairs and it won't heat your bedroom. Because before you were turning this off at night because you didn't want to have heat in the middle of the night. But now you keep this warm. Duckless wants to be running at a steady state. It's just like on the freeway. It's more efficient to kind of keep your foot on the gas a little and go 70 than it is to go 70, 70, you know, or like 100 at a time, right? And so for these guys, uh, they were trying to recover the space with the ductless like they did with the old furnace. And that led to some um, satisfaction issues because why wouldn't you do that, right? Until you know what you know. Like, let's go outside and I'm going to show you a couple of sweet. This doesn't have much to do with the, the lesson at hand, but was, and if you're still on the video, you'll get a kick out of these sweet speedy lines. I was just kind of thrilled by this one especially. So... Our unit's over here, but we brought a six inch for the upstairs heads up through here. And then you can see how that goes into a soffit. But I just thought, you know, you did a sweet job of cutting that in. Guys just did an excellent job. That looks super good, I'll step back. Nice. Then let's take you down to the outer unit it's on. So again, remember, this is not a gas furnace. It, you don't turn it off at night all the way. You turn off the room you're in if you have a master bedroom that you want that way, but you don't turn off the downstairs or that main core area because you don't need to. I have, this, I have a ductless system at my house, five zones. I leave it on at 65 all through every bit of everything, and my bills are half my natural gas neighbors. And so you just don't need to worry about the penny pinching of it. It's uh, built to run that way. So, here's an outdoor unit. This is a 4MXS, um, and it's kicking some butt right now. Sounds pretty sweet, too. Let's check out the noise. <laughs> I love that. If you aren't familiar with, uh, like, the Daikin Fit, you know, if you're in the... Um, in the installation game and and uh, you know installing a lot of unitary equipment if you have the chance to um, check out the Daikin fit it's basically that and I've got some videos on it but it's an air conditioner that goes on a furnace and it's amazing so here's some speedy channel this is how we got to uh, one of the attic uh, sections for the master bedroom so that goes there and then let me show you this around the corner this was cool just an idea just a concept of you know you don't have to have it run all the way up. If you can get to the, the attic with some of it. Sorry. So, see, we came through the attic and we dropped down to that head that was in the master bedroom. And then he wanted us to run our condensate instead of coming all the way down. He wanted us to tie into the gutter, which is fine at his request. Um, we did that. So that's in there and that's kind of fancy looking. But that's sweet. So anyways, that's a lesson. If you're having any... I don't know, operational issues with your ductless and and you need some advice, feel free to contact me. I don't always get back to everything I try, but you know, I'm going to four to six things a day, so I don't always get to. But that's the news. So thanks for watching and I hope I helped. Talk to you next time.